Hi there, everyone. My name is Christian Eschbach. Welcome to another one of my album reviews, and it is brand new release time. That's right, baby. We are already into the brand new Billy Talent Crisis of Faith album. <sighs> All right. How are we going to handle this one? Let's get into this. Let's, ju let's just go straight into this, all right? Album opens up with Forgiveness 1 and 2. Brilliant way to open the album. Because it opens up... One lets you know that it is still a Billy Talent album, okay? Without a doubt, you know right away that this is a Billy Talent album. But, right away, you also know you're going to get some new stuff, some new sounds, some new stuff, some new style out of this one. And you can really, really hear it in Forgiveness 1 and 2. The gallop they, they get going is channeling some Iron Maiden action in there a little bit. Got this great pace going on. Um, you can tell that they've really been playing and experimenting a lot more. Yeah, it still sounds like Billy Talent. But you can hear the prog. That's right. You can hear the prog in there coming out. And it's wonderful. Uh, after that, we get into Reckless Paradise. Reckless Paradise, honestly, to me, just kind of feels like a basic Billy Talent song. It's a good tune, but... And I find it interesting because there was a sticker that came on the front of it, and I forgot to keep the sticker. And Reckless Paradise, I believe, was one of the three songs that they were pushing on there. And it's really weird because it's a very basic... Like if if you are a if you want to hear something that sounds like classic Billy Talent, Regulus Paradise is, is classic Billy Talent. I want to say Billy Talent three, definitely has some major vibes like a Billy Talent three going on in there. Um, I beg to differ. This will get better. I believe was the other track, the second track that was listed on the stickers. Uh. I Beg to Differ isn't a bad tune. I really enjoy it as well. Um, it... After Reckless Paradise, I kind of just get absorbed into the next few tracks. So you got I Beg to Differ, This Will Get Better, and The Wolf. Both of them fantastic songs. They're really, really enjoyable. But when I'm listening to the album, they blend into the album so much that when it moves through, I really don't notice. And this is a good thing, not a bad thing either. That, you know, you, you've by the time you get done The Wolf, you've already blown through four songs. It doesn't feel like you've blown through four songs. It actually feels like you've only gone through one or two songs. Maybe, maybe a third one, possibly, because they just kind of all flow perfectly in each other. Where it's this perfect kind of cascade of music where you don't you just get locked into it and it's kind of almost kind of hard to separate them all from each other and i don't really start noticing separation or really start noticing you know changes in the songs until i get to react i should mention where I, I said everything kind of flows in cascades naturally until you get to reactor and then that's when i start picking back up again uh, the reason, one of the reasons for that is, you know, Reckless Par um, Forgiveness Part 1 and 2, great pacing tempo. Like, I mean, just beautiful. Keeps you driven and going. Great gallop to it. Reckless Paradise, more straight ahead rock. I beg to differ a little more straight ahead rock, but both of those are definitely much more like Billy Talent 3 to me. The Wolf, but each song also is slowing down a little bit as it goes, I find a little, just, just a little. And when you get to The Wolf, The Wolf is definitely much more melodic and compared to a lot of the other stuff on that's been on here. And that's why when you get to Reactor, all of a sudden you notice Reactor again because, you know, as you've been slowly lulled into this wonderful peace and calm going through this album, all of a sudden you hit Reactor and it just jumps and hits you again. And it's fantastic. Then you go to Judged. Now, judged right away, you're back to, like, Billy Talent 1, Billy Talent 2. Although, I don't recall ever hearing any cursing in Billy Talent before, and then all of a sudden we got a little cursing on this one. Right at the fucking beginning. I'm trying to establish, you know, what I'm going with here. And Judged is great. I love Judged. 
judged is such a beautiful, scathing indictment of the current cancel culture, I think. It really is. And not to say that, you know, they're they're showing any type of political bias here, okay? I want to be very clear. There's no political bias in any way. It's more the everybody judging everybody else and how harshly everybody's judging everybody else while everybody's still got skeletons in their closet. And your typical way it is your straight-ahead Billy Talent-style punk kind of song. Old-school Billy Talent. Then you get to what I what is my favorite song on this album, and that's hanging out with all the wrong people. Oh my god! Once again, this is yet another scathing indictment uh, of society right now, and you know how everybody is just hanging out with all the wrong people, and how people are getting caught up in these scams or these uh, debacles or whatnot. Because they're hanging out with all the wrong people. And there's some in here where you know it's like 100%. Let me see if I, I have the lyrics here. Um, there's one specifically that was just like a beautiful line. I'm trying to remember what is, what is which one it was. Uh, uh, well, a long, long time ago, there was a guy I used to know. They said he fell in love for all the wrong reasons. She got the house, she took the cat, she got the shirt right off his back, and now she's living in the Caribbean. <laughs> Sorry, it took me so long to dig out that, that line. But, you know, and, and then there's another verse, and then it goes on to, uh, you know, the chorus of the hanging out with all the wrong people. And, and, and it, it's it's basically, you know, this on-running story of, you know, how you get into trouble because you're hanging out with all the wrong people. You know, <laughs> how your life goes to shit because you're hanging out with all the wrong people. And really, it, it is, it's a fun song, too. I like it musically. It's really fun. Um... And then that's followed up with End of Me featuring Rivers Como of Weezer fame. And I love me some Weezer. I've done some Weezer reviews. Weezer is very enjoyable. And you hear Billy Talent working with Rivers. I can understand on this song why they do it. And it's a really good tune. It's really enjoyable. And this was the third song that was on the sticker on the front. And... This is another one where I don't understand why... I get why they're pushing it, because, you know, it's with Rivers Como. But at the same time, I don't get why they're pushing it, because it's not... It's not, not really that exciting of a song, you know? Uh, there, I think it's interesting. Like, Reckless Paradise, I get why they push that one as a single, sort of. I beg to differ. I'm a little in on why they push that one. And to me, I, I, I don't get why that one's a push at all. Um, it's not a bad song. It's an enjoyable song, but it's not compared to everything else on this album. It, it's kind of a cool little guest spot, but that's all it is. Really. It's a cool little guest spot. Uh, and then you got one less problem, which is fantastic as well. I, I totally dig one less problem. I think it's a great song. Really get into it. Really gets going. And then the album finishes with For You. For You, I really like this song, and I really like that they picked this song to finish off the album. Uh, musically, it definitely reminds me of music you would have found most likely on Dead Silence. Uh, yeah, the fourth Weezer album. Or no, Weezer, sorry. The fourth Billy Talent album. Uh, For You definitely feels like it, it, it would have fit on there musically. But it is very uplifting. It is very wonderful. It has a great, great presence to it. A great warmth to it. You know, like, it really leaves you feeling really good when the album finishes. And to me, that is really, really important. That is really, really necessary. And I'm very, very happy that that is how they chose to finish this album. The whole way around 
if you are a Billy Tower fan, okay, so me as a Billy Tower fan, my choice of order for albums, and that will include this one now, would probably be Dead Silence, then number three, then Crisis of Faith, then number one, then number two, and then Afraid of Heights. I enjoyed Afraid of Heights. It was a really cool album, but it doesn't do what this album does. Uh, this album really does encapsulate everything from Billy's career, plus still giving new music as we go, or new energy, new vibes. You can see they're experimenting more. You can tell they're following more of that prog mentality that inspired them, and I've already covered this when I covered Rush's 2112 40th Anniversary Edition, where Billy Dallin appears on there, um, doing uh, Bangkok, Train to Bangkok, or Passage to Bangkok, sorry. And th this is, this definitely has that in there. You can see the growth, you can hear the growth, you can hear the music experimentation, and it's fantastic. But at the same time, as I've mentioned, there are songs in here that definitely you can trace back to different albums, different periods with their sound and with the way that they're playing. So while they're still growing and experimenting, they're also leaving some stuff for the original fans. The you know, Because I got into Billy Talent right at the beginning. You know, Billy Talent 1, I was already there. Believe it or not, Billy Talent 2, I wasn't into so much. I uh, I just really never got into that album. But arguably, it is still a better album than Afraid of Heights was. Um, I have debated with people over Dead Silence or Billy Talent 3 being the better album. I'm fine with whoever wants to go whichever way on that one. There are great songs on both of them, and there are great tracks that I will always listen to on both of them. This album definitely, I think, is a solid third out of everything that Billy Talent's released now because it's got, like, I, I really, I've listened to this album. Usually when I buy a brand new album, I like to listen to it, really listen to it, immerse myself into it, really, really get into it. And this album, I really did, but I didn't do it just so I can listen to the album. I did it because I was really enjoying the album. Like I, I, I just went out. I've in the last two, three weeks, I've picked up ten or so brand new CDs. I mean, not brand brand new releases, just new to me CDs or new release. And I've had them all going on my uh, MP3 player. So when I'm going to and from work, I'm listening to them a lot. And I keep going back to this album over and over again because I'm just really, really digging on it. I'm really enjoying it. So if you have not picked up this album yet, I highly recommend you go and pick it up. It is a great album. It is totally worth having. Absolutely. Um, those are my thoughts. Those are my opinions. Those are my views. Leave me your thoughts and opinions and views. That's what the comment section is for. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Let me know what your list of Billy Collin albums are. You know, what order you like them in. That's cool. Uh, like button, subscribe button, please, folks. That subscribe button is very, very important. I'm going to be pushing this a lot more going into the summer. I have a trip planned where I'm going up to Montreal, Quebec to go see Rammstein in August. I'd love to be able to do some live feeds. I can't live feed the concert. That, that's a no-no. But I'd love to be able to live feed the crowd outside and stuff like that. I'd really love to be able to show people what what I'm seeing there. Plus, you know, just my trip to, Mon to Montreal in general, I'd love to be able to show people in Montreal some of the really cool stuff that's there live. You know, I mean, I can always edit it and add it on later. And, but to actually see it live is just something completely awesome, something totally fun and enjoyable. So I want to be able to do that for everybody, both my, my music fans and, you know, my album review watchers and my Confessions of a Domestic Engineer watchers. I want everybody to have the chance to be able to live stream when I, when I start live streaming. And I need more subscribers to do that so I can live stream because YouTube has changed their um, rules on that. So if you could subscribe, please, that would be great. Otherwise, uh, there is a uh, Patreon link below in the description. Click on that. You can throw some money my way if you like. Otherwise, peace, love, take care.